Hi. So last week, some old Willie Nelson, George Carlin looking guy opened the video. Hi. Hi. I'm Nifty Clements. So in this video, I figured I'd just do a quick tutorial and show you how I did that. Now I'm sure most of you have guessed that I used the recently repopulized Face app, but any of you that have signed your life away to it will know that uh, Face app doesn't do videos. Which raises the question, how do you process a video in an image only manipulation app? If your answer is you simply convert your video to an image and then process each frame one by one, yeah, you're correct. That's how you do it. And uh, Ren over at Corridor Digital had the exact same idea. Uh, he beat me to it by like a day. I really want to see a video with this. And I think the way to do that is basically just take the video, render it out as an image sequence, import all those images into your phone, then you have to manually go through and do it. What am I about to see? <laughs> I'm an old man. <laughs> <laughs> that actually looks pretty good. I bet oh, yeah. you within one year we'll it's see that. face app for video. If you aren't watching Corridor, I highly suggest you go check them out. They make amazing visual effects based short films and videos. And they have a really fun vlog type channel where they show a lot of the making of their videos and just get up to a lot of other fun stuff. Anyway, yes, it is an extremely tedious process, but as you saw, it does work. And it will not only work for just FaceApp, but it'll work for pretty much any image-only manipulation app. But let's just get right into it. So first, you're going to record your video, and the shorter, the better, obviously. I'm actually just going to pull up an older video. Um, I'm going to go back to actually a previous tutorial, um, the beard regrow tutorial. And I want to go to the final clip where I regrew my beard. I think doing the aging effect on this might look really cool, um, like a really white Santa Claus beard. So I'm going to go in and just isolate this clip. And so not only will my beard be growing, but I'll also be getting older. So that could look really neat. All right, now I have that clip isolated. And this clip is just over four seconds long and we're in a 24 frames per second composition. Four times 24. So yeah, so we're at about 96 frames. So 96 frames, that's not horrible, but we don't necessarily have to process all 96 of those frames. In fact, with FaceApp at least, we might actually get a better result only processing half of those frames. Initially, I just did a quick proof of concept to make sure that this would actually work. Hi, I am Nick D. Clements. And I was actually pretty pleased with the final result. Of course, it is a bit choppy because it is only playing at 12 frames per second. Therefore, when it came time to do the full intro, I figured I'd just bite the bullet and do it at the full 24 frames per second, processing over 140 frames through FaceApp. And I used to make stuff like this. And yeah, while the motion of the shot was buttery smooth and the FaceApp result was actually really consistent overall, the beard kind of had a really distracting flickering going on. And at first I was just gonna leave it. I mean, the result is what it is. But then I looked at my test again and it really didn't have that same flickering issue. So looking at it closer, for one, it seems that was shot a little bit closer to the camera. And so the resolution on the beard was a bit more consistent. But also I think it was because it was playing back at 12 frames per second. And that 12 frames per second was kind of hiding some of that other jittering that I might be seeing. Now, just to stop for a quick second, it's interesting to me how your face app result can be affected by things like the framing of the shot, the lighting, even the background. For instance, the first test I did with the app, my picture looked like this. But then when I uploaded photos from my DSLR, the result was quite a bit different. Now, if you do have any interest in how this app is actually doing what it's doing, I highly suggest you go over and check out that Corridor Crew video where they delve into the app and theorize on what technologies they're probably using to pull that all off. But going back to the full intro, I dropped it down to 12 FPS and it did indeed look better, but I still wanted that nice smooth motion. But it turns out all I had to do was slow the video back down by 50% and turn on Premiere's optical flow. It's a bit of a newer feature in Premiere, but it basically generates the missing frames, kind of merging them one into the next. But with that done, we just export it again, and the result is actually really good. Um, there's still some weird warping and blending going on, but I think it's preferable to the flickering. And we should actually be able to apply the same technique to the first test. And that actually looks pretty good too. So in the end, I wasted about an hour processing 120 or so frames that I didn't even use. So knowing all that, we can just put this clip into a 12 frame per second sequence and export it. 12. Okay, okay. 
Now, before we export this, there is one more thing we need to do. If we just exported it as is, and then load all the images under the phone and try and start processing them, you're going to realize very quickly that trying to keep track of which photo you're on and which one you've done, which one you haven't done is basically impossible. Especially if you're just selecting photos from the face app menu. As you can see, it reorders them. Our beginning of the sequence is somewhere in the middle. And of course, if I select one, it moves that photo to the beginning of the list. So there's no way you can keep track of which one you've clicked on. Plus, it probably hasn't pulled in all of our photos. For some reason, it might've seen one photo and just not detected a face. Anyway, there's a simple way to solve this. We just have to put a number on each one of the photos. So I will just apply a time code effect to our clip. And because the gallery crops the photos in a square, I need to make sure that this number is within the square so I can see it. So we could put our number in the corner here and then just mask it out for the final shot. Or we could try putting it below the image and then recropping it later. I think I'm gonna try that. I want to make my composition taller than 180. And there we go, now we have a number on all of our frames. So that should make it way easier to keep track of which frame we're on in the app. So now we can go ahead and export this as an image sequence, load those onto the phone. And there we go, and now we can see all of our numbers very easily and clearly. And again, you can see how weird the numbering system is in FaceApp. So we got 35 to 25, then 26. So there's no way that you could blindly keep track of which frame you're on or which one you need to do. And if we go in the gallery, they're pretty much straightforward. We start at the beginning and then we kind of have our middle. Anyway, enough stalling. Let's just start processing pictures. We only have about 51 to do, so that's not too bad. But uh, first I wanna just actually take one of the ones with the beard and see what kind of results uh, we're gonna get. So I wanna do age. And oh, we have, uh, there's new aging things. There's cool old. Let's just look what like the old, old looked like. There we go. That's a pretty cool result. What's the cool old? Oh, it just, oh, just, that's, that's kind of cool. <laughs> as the name implies. I think I'll, what do you think? Old, old or cool old? I think I like the cool old. A bit whiter, a bit nicer. We'll go with that. That should look pretty neat. All right, so let's start with frame zero and age cool old. All right, that's kind of a funky result, but we will be fading into this result. So that's what we got. So we'll hit apply and then we'll save that. It's fine. You're stealing all my fixtures, whatever. Two, no, frame one, We're starting at zero. I'm back. All right, so I'm going to do this 50 more times and then uh, I'll be back. All right, and that is frame 50 done. So now let's get these images off the phone and onto the computer where we can put them into Premiere and see how it looks. Doing just a quick preview, flipping through the images, I am noticing that it's kind of skipping the top of my head through the middle of it. I'm not sure why it didn't recognize my hair and turn that gray as well, and then it suddenly did, but uh, we can just work with that in the final comp, just kind of mask over it and fade into it. Okay, just one final step before we import these into Premiere. Uh, they do need to be renamed, so Premiere will recognize them as an image sequence. Uh, so I'm just gonna right click, I'm gonna use my better file renamer program. Probably sort by date from older to newer since I did these sequentially and perform renames. Rename all. all. Right, and 50 is 50. 25 is 25. Looks good. Import, select our first frame, image sequence checked and open. And we can set this to interpret as 12 frames per second. Drag that over to our clip and let's take a quick look. Ha! That's pretty cool. That actually looks really neat. 
It makes the fake beard that I did in this shot look even more real. Um, we are still getting the weird flickering, and of course it shot, it didn't process the top of my head, um, so we can fix all of that. But first, to take care of our 12 frame per second playback, we are actually going to change the interpretation of this back to 24 frames per second. And then we are going to change the speed, slow that down by 50%. So it looks exactly the same, but once we enable optical flow and render this out, we're going to get that nice smooth blending from frame to frame. So now let's take care of a few other things. We'll make a copy of our original and we'll just mask through it. And we'll do it like this. We want to invert that. So I'm masking through my original video down to the face app video. Um, and this way I can chop off where it didn't process my head until it does, and then we can uh, fade in and reveal that. Um, and also it's just gonna help us get rid of the face app um, watermark, which with uh, all of the controversy surrounding their app, I uh, do not have any issues removing that watermark. And I think it, I think you get it removed if you pay for Pro anyway. Um, so whatever. Um, so we'll just set this mask here. And I'll just make one more copy. Actually, we'll just kind of fade it along the whole time up near the end. We'll put a mask path keyframe there. Now let's check that out. That's not too bad. We're even hitting uh, a musical note when the hair flicks on, right at that little that little flourish. Lines up perfectly when the hair finishes up. So that, that works out. That's just a nice little accent. So an error or something that wasn't favorable uh, works out in the final edit just by happenstance. And so we're slowly fading up the old effect and then we're also just fading where the weird kind of harsh line was from where the face app effect was kind of not blending properly. That's really cool. That's, I almost wish I would have thought to do this when I did the original clip, but uh, I'm glad I'm doing it now. But okay, let's, let's render this out and see how it looks with the optical flow processed. Oh. I like it. I do like it. Um, there is some wiggle in the hair, but of course in this shot, the hair is actually growing back. So I think it adds to it. That's really cool. I wanna stretch out this keyframe just a bit more, just to slow that down just a bit. And actually, And yeah, and where the, the sound effect, even from the original video of that little sound, it didn't quite line up um, and I didn't, I just, I lined it up to what the video did instead of what kind of looked right. Um, we'll use that as an accent for when the really old age effect kicks in. So now it goes. And so now we're kind of accentuating the old age effect with that thump sound. So at least it has a bit more of a purpose. And I smoothed out the uh, the hair a bit longer, just made that effect fade a bit longer. So this is really cool. Beyond even just doing this for fun, just making a video in FaceApp just for the heck of it, you can use this as a legitimate way to make effects in a video you're trying to do. Very cool. Oh. And that's really all there is to it. It's really simple to do, but it can be time consuming and pretty tedious. And as I said, this should work with any image only manipulation software. So not just FaceApp. 
So I want to do just a quick example showing how you would do this in an app like Prisma. So first I just need a clip that I want to apply a filter to. I think I'll try this one of Lisa and her previous bird, Viper. And I'll just get that clip loaded into Premiere and then isolate the section I want. And again, I'm going to save myself some time and reduce it down to 12 frames per second. I'll apply a counter to this one as well, and then we can get those frames exported and loaded into the app. Alright, this is Prisma, and with one of the frames pulled up, I'm going to look through the available filters and see if I can find one that I like. Unfortunately, most of the really cool filters are behind a paywall, but there should be one or two cool free ones available. I guess this comic book one would be kind of cool, so I think I'm going to go with that. And just like with FaceApp, I'll import each frame and then process them one by one. And with all of those frames processed, we get them downloaded off the phone, renamed, imported into Premiere, and following the exact same steps that we did for FaceApp, we have our filtered clip. I realized that the installation on my phone actually had some filters that my emulator didn't, so I went ahead and uh, processed one more. But that'll do it for this one. I hope you found it useful or interesting. At the very least, I hope you see that you're really limited only by your imagination. A image-only app can do video if you think outside the box and have some time and patience. But my sincere thank you for watching. Once again, I am Nicky Clements. If you're wondering, Nick is short for Nicholas and the D stands for Dingleberry. Anyway, I'm off to make something else. Good enough, good enough, 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 no. Stop watching me. No, please don't, please don't.